great. But anyway, so the question is when do we stop? So there is one technique called early stopping okay, uh, where you say that hey I am considering all of these regions right all of the split points okay, but the amount of improvement I get in my error is very small right and therefore I stop. I come to some point so I, I let us say I have like uh, several regions here now so I consider R1 okay. Right, I consider all possible ways where I can pick an x1, all possible ways where I can pick x2 and try to split and the error does not change by much, okay. I can stop. I do not have to keep going into smaller and smaller regions even if there are many data points here I can stop, right. Is that a good idea? So, let us go back to xr. Right. So, this is not a classification problem we are talking about regression. So, the x's have a output of plus 5 and <laughs> the zeros have a output of minus 5 right and you are trying to fit this right. I can try to look at splitting it on x1. So, I have x1 let, let, let me speak I have x1 and there is x2 right. So, if I try to split on x1 right what will I do? right I mean the only thing I can do is this right. So, if I split anywhere else I will be just keeping a, all the data in one side right and all other uh, I mean the other one will be empty right this is the only meaningful uh, breaking point right and what will be the prediction error here whatever the half of it right I will be predicting the average of this right. So, it is 0 and 5 then I will be predicting 2.5. So, it is essentially 2.5 squared into 2 right what would have been the prediction error if I had kept the entire region as 1? Same thing right the average average some square would be the same right. So, if I split on x 1 I am not getting any improvement. So, let me not split on x 1 okay what about x 2? Same if I split on x 2 I will not get any improvement let me not split on x 2 that essentially means that I will just give you the average output for all the 4 data points. But if I split on x 1 and then split on x2 okay now i can do really well right so early stopping is usually a bad idea because we'll miss out such these kinds of interaction effects if we stop too early right but then how do you decide where to split on split on x1 anyway we are getting the same thing even if it take the whole data within the uh, good point yeah uh, so, in this case I mean uh, one of them is a trivial split right in this case it is easy, but uh, in general uh, yeah so you will have to take a call yeah. What if in case like during situations like they keep thinking that please do not split on yeah. one of them at one time, but both at the same time yeah. and then, then we will see uh, uh, yeah. So, just think about think about this optimization problem right if I am going to split on two at the same time this optimization problem becomes harder right instead of minimizing over j and s. I will have to minimize over j1, j2, s1, s2. So, in this case, we, it we becomes harder and harder. We, we could probably carry out that step when we meet some situation like this. Sure, you, you, you could think of uh, other ways of optimizing it, right. So, but the most common way of doing it is this main reason people do not do two variables at a time is the interaction effect, right. I mean, so, you if you start looking at two variables at a time, then I can start thinking of whole bunch of other things. So, why do I look at j greater and alone, right? I could think of other combinations right j 1 by x x j by x k right x j x k I mean so then it just starts exploding. So, people just said oh ok fine we will just do it this way and make sure that we grow a large tree very large tree. So, that we actually capture the interaction effects in fact you stop when the when the leaves are small right think of a tree right. So, the leaf of a tree is a region 
right. So, the region small I put it in quotes it is not the extent of the region it is the number of data points in the region right. So, so small would be like 2 or 3 or 5 or something of some really small number depending on how large your data set was you keep growing your tree. So, if you, if you use some of the standard tools right there will be an inbuilt parameter right which says how small the leaf should be right and uh, you might have to go and twiddle with it. If you are going to use a decision tree uh, function from either Wicca or MATLAB or something right they have an in inbuilt parameter that says how small is the leaf when they stop right. So, for Wicca it is 2 right you might want to change that to 5 or something I am not sure what is the limit in MATLAB. Uh, but you might want to change that. So, that is that is a parameter that you have to fix right and it matters ok it actually matters like he pointed out. So, if you if you uh, set it too small then you might miss things like this right and then what do you do. You build a very very big tree right this is what I was telling you you try to use your greedy algorithm and get the best possible tree that you can right. So, a tree with very very small leaves is kind of the best tree that you can build right right once you get there now you are going to ask the question ok what is the smaller tree that I can get that performs almost as well as the big tree that I have right. So, there are two ways of doing it the first one which is called reduced error pruning ok it is uh, rather simple. So, uh, when we say leaf size is small there are many leaf sizes yeah, each leaf the, the smallest the largest leaf is smaller than the threshold I set. Okay. So, every leaf should be less than that size. So, basically I mean I can stop each branch independently. So, whenever a leaf reaches size 2 I do not split it anymore. So, I keep doing but the other branches can continue growing. So, the tree does not have to be of uniform height right at some part some sub tree might be shorter some sub tree might be longer right. So, if you, if you remember that picture here. So, I kept drawing lines in only one region. So, that means that part alone would have been a much deeper uh, sub tree and the others would have been much shallower. So, that is fine. So, reduced error pruning is something very simple right. So, I have a training training set I build the tree fully on the training set and then I have a validation set right. We talked about validation set long time back I have a validation set. Now, what I do is I start greedily or not greedily it is very safely pruning away my in my internal nodes right. So, what I can do oh and I erase the only tree I had on board here. Uh, So, what I do is I have this prediction that I am making right I will replace right an internal node with a leaf right that is sorry exactly I am just joining the regions together. Now, I see the performance of this with respect to the validation set. Right, so, I had the original performance on the whole tree right now I look at the performance with respect to the validation set right it could go down right it could go up 
right, depending on how the validation set is, right? I mean, because the tree was constructed only on the training set. When you do the pruning, the error might actually go up. I mean, the error might go down. Sorry, right? For on the validation set, if the error improves or stays the same, I'll keep this. Right? But if the error becomes much worse, right? I'll put it back. So I know the yis. So I just use the yis for making the prediction, right? And then I keep doing this in turn. But this would depend on the validation state. Then. Yeah. Yeah. It could cause could could cause more variation. Yeah, I agree. Provided, I mean, usually you use reduced error pruning when you have a large enough validation set, so you can actually trust it, right? And then you try this again, right? And then if it does not work, keep going, yeah. How did you collapse those two in the one So it is like I have this region, right? Instead of that, I just treat this as one region. But see, there may be different values on both sides. No, no, once I collapse the region, I again do an average on this whole region and use that as the output, right? See, once I collapse, his question is each one of this could have been outputting a different value right what will you do with the combined node right so i'll take all the data points in the combined node take the average output and use that as the new output for this right i could take the average of these two but why is that not a good idea huh? the number of data points could be different right so it's they will not be truly the average of the outputs so if they, if they are having the same number of data points, then I can take the average of these outputs and use it there. Otherwise, I shouldn't. Okay. So I keep doing this. Suppose I was able to prune, right? And now I have pruned this, and I have pruned this as well. Then I can go back and try to prune that also, right? I can replace this whole thing with this and see how the performance is on the validation set, right? This is a one-step No, the reduced error pruning is only on one thing. You see, the problem if I do cross validation is I will end up with 5 different trees after the pruning. Now, the question is how do I combine those 5 trees, right? Yeah, so. Exactly, so, so that is that's, that's right. Reduced error pruning works with only one validation set, it does not use cross validation, right? So, and that for that reason, it is not that popular anymore. I am just introducing reduced error pruning because it is easy way to think about pruning, right. Uh, but like as Ishu was pointing out, first of all the variance will be very high depending on what you pick for the validation set, right, you will end up with a very different tree, right. So just like uh, I mean already decision trees suffer from uh, very high variance uh, and uh, reduced error pruning will actually make the variance worse. Uh, but um, this is con conceptually easy way of thinking about pruning. And if I introduce a more complex pruning method, right, then a little harder, right? Yeah? How many times can you prune like that? Sorry? If you have a large tree, then how many times can you keep on checking? As long as you are improving. Isn't that a very exhaustive? Uh, sure. So, what is cost validation? I will come to that. I have a whole class planned on all those model selection methods, right. Since he knew about cross validation, he asked me the question I answered, uh, but uh, yeah, I will come back to that, right. I have a whole, uh, whole lecture planned on uh, model selection, okay. So cross validation is something uh, guys should never forget once you learn. Yeah. The other uh, kind of pruning which uh, we are all familiar with is called uh, cost complexity pruning, right, where you have your uh, error function, right, and you also have your it is there in the name, also have a cost for the complexity, okay, like you had your 
beta squared in your uh, ridge regression and things like that, right? Or norm beta. So you, you already know about this kind of cost complexity measures, right? So we looked at that in uh, uh, ridge regression. We looked at that in lasso and things like that. And here, what we essentially do is. we grow the full tree right and then what we do is for uh, every possible non terminal node that you can collapse right you collapse that non terminal node so which would mean that the entire subtree underneath it you consider as a single region you can replace it with the average prediction for the single region like that you can collapse each of the non terminals and create many many different trees right so each of this is a subtree of the original tree right so what you do is once you created uh, such a collapsed tree you look at the average prediction error of the tree and right? essentially look at the prediction error for each data point divided by the number of data points you get the average prediction error and add a complexity term right the prediction error plus some size of the tree right So, what is the complexity that we are really if, uh, so t is a tree and alpha is a parameter I will come to that. So, what is the complexity measure you think is good for a tree? Number of leaves right number of leaves number of regions you have split it into. So, that is the measure that we will use. So, when I say size of a tree it is the number of regions that the tree splits the input space into. So, alpha is a parameter that controls how small a tree I want large alpha means small trees small alpha means large trees okay so now i essentially find my t okay which is a sub tree of the original tree right so it's not any arbitrary tree t okay i, I have a original t a tree that i have grew uh, that i grew with this procedure right with this procedure i grow a tree and then i stop when the leaves are small and then what i do is i try and collapse each of the internal nodes of the tree and you can do this in a slightly better fashion right uh, you can try to collapse uh, from the lowest level on up and then stop at some point and things like that uh, but you should remember that it could very well be that maybe collapsing one sub tree alone might not give you much of an improvement right but if i collapse everything above it right it might give me an improvement why So, maybe collapsing this alone does not give me an improvement, but collapsing here might, might give me an improvement. Why? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> almost there. <laughs> Uniform noise. No, see the point is the error reduction might be small, right? Uh, but then I might not have gotten rid of enough nodes, right? If I get rid of this whole thing, right, I get rid of a lot of regions. The complexity of my tree comes down significantly. So even if I'm making a slightly higher prediction error, I might be willing to accept that because I have reduced the size by such a significant amount, right? So, that is one of the reasons you consider all possible things Maybe pruning lower down might not simplify the tree enough for you to accept the error reduction, but if you go higher up the tree you might actually get the same error reduction right I mean error I mean whatever by reduction I mean error worsening right, but you might have you might have reduced the tree by a much larger amount therefore you are willing to accept that right. So, it is actually not a great idea to just go bottom up right. So, so these are uh, small things to remember. Great, so that is something which you pick. Okay. Since the magic word has been introduced, uh, so you pick alpha, who asked the alpha question? Yeah. 
Okay. Since the magic word has been introduced, you pick alpha by cross validation. <laughs> I will tell you about cross validation <laughs> in a while. Okay. So, that, all of you understand what validation is, right? So, cross validation essentially is, is kind of a multiple rounds of validation. And instead of just using a single validation set, you in fact try to uh, use all parts of your data as validation, right? In a very systematic fashion. Okay, we'll we'll talk about this more detail later. But just to give you a rough idea, and so is this clear? So what we are doing here? Sir, yeah. You said that if we go the, the bottom up, we we may not get the right tree. Mm. But then, uh, how should we uh, go about picking where to start? No, you, you look at all possible collapsing, right? So basically, what I mean by collapsing, remove an internal node, the entire subtree structure underneath it, whatever regions it was covering, you consider that as a single region, and you replace it with that. So I can choose any internal node to collapse. So right? the whole, sub whole subtree, and, yeah, whole subtree that's, underneath. That's what I mean. That it's a very complex thing. If you're only showing a small tree. If it's a very large tree, then collapsing each one node and then checking it. Yeah, it's a, it's, it's an expensive process. That's why I said if it is expensive, you can come up with other mechanisms of ordering it, right? But the best way to, to do it, a, sorry? Is there optimal method to select the node to Nope. Nope. Well, this decision tree says nothing that is optimal. I mean, right? I mean, it's, everything is hard, right? So, any questions on, any other questions on cost complexity pruning? Uh, most likely, yes. But we don't know, right? Until you actually fit it, you wouldn't know. For example, in the XOR case, would you call it overfitting or not? So, you wouldn't know, right? Until until you fit the data, you don't know whether you are overfitting or not. So you have to grow the whole tree. And if you are overfitting, then when you prune, you will actually uh, end up uh, removing it. I mean, the error will obviously on the training data, the error will obviously be lower when you overfit. Right? And that is why you need the complexity criteria. Right? So when I prune, if I do not lose too much in terms of accuracy, then I am happy to prune. Right? So any other question? So, so essentially what you do with alpha is you pick a good choice of alpha right? and then uh, try to do the pruning on uh, 5 different validation sets and then pick another choice of alpha, try it on the same 5 validation sets. You pick another different alpha, try it on the same five validation sets, and then pick an alpha that gives you the best what kind thing. Of range you have to from uh, it depends on how you are normalizing the prediction error, and as well as what is the expected size of the tree you are going to see, right? If the prediction error lies between zero and one, and the tree sizes are of order of ten thousands, right? You would really want your alpha range to be small. Right, but the tree is also of the order of say 5 or 10 nodes, then the alphas could be larger. 